Now, we appreciate your presence here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church today. We welcome every one of you. And you that's listening out in the radio listening audience, I most certainly appreciate you tuning in Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. Now, this is Preacher Edward speaking. I'm hoping during this hour coming up we can be an inspiration to many of you and the radio listening audience as well as you here in the auditorium. All right, take your Bible today and turn, will you please, to the book of Jonah. The book of Jonah, chapter 2, page 944 in the original Schofield Reference Bible. Now they're singing the music and the message will be on tape 298. Tape 298. If you'd like to have this tape, write in request it. We'll send the tape out to you for a gift of $3. And the gift is used to take care of our radio expense. Now if you're not getting our daily broadcast, if you're tuned to this station where you're now listening, you can get the daily broadcast at 12 o'clock noon each day. If you'd like to have a list of our tape, we can send you a list of almost 300. If you'd like to write in and get a list, you can select the ones you'd like to have. Write in request by title or by number. And then if you'd like to have a brochure on our proposed Holy Land tour, then be sure and write in and get the, the brochure. Turn to Jonah chapter 2. Mrs. Smith was standing by a first grave where she just buried her husband. She's weeping. Stranger came up and said, Lady, said, I just want to tell you, you're the most beautiful woman I've ever seen, just so lovely. She looked at him and said, How dare you to talk to me like that in a time of sadness like this? I've just buried my husband. Well, he said, Lady, I, I just had to tell you, you so lovely and so beautiful. She turned and looked at him and smiled through the tears and said, you ought to see me when I hadn't been crying. All right, Jonah chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried, but reached of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the bed of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Thou hast cast me into the deep and in the midst of the seas, and the floods compassed me about, all thy billows and thy ways passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight, yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul, the depths closed me round about, the weeds wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottoms of the mountains, the earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet as thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord, my God, when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. They that observe lying vanities forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish that vomit out Jonah upon dry land. That's Jonah chapter 2. I'm speaking to you on this subject. The man that remembered salvation is of the Lord. If you read in Exodus chapter 14 and verse 12, you find that Moses said to his people, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We know that salvation is of God entirely. It's of God in its origination. It's of God in its application. It's of God in its effectuation. It's of God in his consummation. You need to realize what salvation is all about. This man Jonah realized that, and when he realized salvation is of the Lord, then something happened. God Almighty caused the fish to discourage him, and out on dry land he went. I want to speak about him today, and I want you to see that salvation is of the Lord. Very few people know the difference between old-fashioned salvation and the grace of God and works in religion. Most of the religious world today is working their way to heaven, trying to depend on their human efforts and good works and good deeds and church membership and so forth to get them to heaven, but they'll miss it. Salvation is of God. Unless God has done something for you inwardly, you'll never make it in. God must save you. Pardon you from your iniquity, impute unto you salvation, impute unto you his divine righteousness, 
or you'll never go to heaven. You need to know the difference between salvation and religion. There are several things about this man, Jonah. I probably won't have time to get them all in, but let me mention a few. We find in chapter 1, he's running from God. In chapter 2, he's running to God. In chapter 3, he's running with God. In chapter 4, he's running ahead of God. You need to search this out for yourself because I'll only maybe just have time to make mention of it without commenting too uh, lengthy upon it. Now, Jonah here was a type of the nation of Israel. Jonah was a great prophet of God. Jesus made mention of him in Matthew chapter 12. Now, we know that the articles of God came to Jonah first, and then, of course, he's a type of Israel in that they came to Israel first of all before they came to the Gentiles. Jonah was disobedient, so was Israel. He was cast out into the sea, and so was Israel, cast out in the sea of the Gentiles. He was pursued by a storm, so have Israel been pursued by a storm now for almost 2,000 years. He was swallowed by a fish, and so Israel has been swallowed by the nations. And of course, God still has his hand upon them, many of them going back, but they were swallowed up by the nations, but they're still Israelites, wherever they may be. And Jonah was preserved in the fish, so is Israel being preserved among the nations of the earth today. Jonah was cast out of the fish, so will Israel as a nation be cast out at the end of the tribulation period when they will turn to their Savior, turn to Jesus, and a nation be saved in a day. Jonah was recommissioned, and so will Israel be recommissioned at the beginning of the millennium, at the end of the tribulation period. In this, we see Jonah was a type of Israel in these many ways. Not only was Jonah a type of Israel, but Jonah was a type of Jesus. He was sent on a great mission, so was Christ sent on a great mission. He voluntarily gave himself up to save some in the boat there. So did Jesus voluntarily gave himself up that we might be saved. He said, no man taketh my life, I lay it down that I might take it up again. He was preserved in the fish three days and three nights. So was the Son of God in the heart of the earth 72 hours, exactly three days and three nights. He had a great resurrection, Jonah did. He came out of that fish's belly. So did the Lord Jesus have a great resurrection. The Bible said he came out of the grave after three days and three nights. Now he was a Jew bringing a message to the Gentiles. So was Jesus put on the earth through a Jewish maiden, and he also had a message for the Gentiles. Then we find that he found a merchant ship on his way uh, to Tarshish. He wanted to ride this merchant ship. And so the Jews today have been very busy in the matter of trade and traffic in the way of ships and whatnot. There are people known to make money to invent and to trade and travel. The Jews have been doing that for some 2,000 years. See, God gave them the power to witness. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost came. They had great power to witness. But instead of witnessing for God, they have used that power, that influence, that ability to make money and to travel and trade. They've been doing that for some 2,000 years. Now, God prepared Jonah a grave in the belly of the whale. In Isaiah chapter 53, the Bible said that God prepared Jesus a grave. There he was buried, of course, uh, died between two thieves and buried in a rich man's grave. In that sense, you see that Jonah is a type of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now let's look briefly at these different chapters, commenting briefly on each one. But I want you to keep in mind that salvation is of the Lord. If you go to heaven, you'd be go there because God saved you. You had no part in it. You didn't earn it. You weren't good enough to make it in. You couldn't do enough good works. Religion won't do it. If you go to heaven, you go there because you're saved by the grace of God. That is salvation. You must remember that. In chapter 1, we see this man here that found out that salvation is of the Lord. He's reminded, he remembers this. And when he found that out, something happened. In chapter 1, let's notice briefly that he received a divine call. In verse 1 in chapter 1, Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah. 
I want to say today, a man that calls himself a minister or a preacher, if he doesn't have a divine call from God, he won't be worth the salt that goes in his bread, spiritually speaking. A man must have this call from God if it amounts to anything in the ministry. We have too many today that's going in preaching a little social gospel, getting their seminary training, going out in the poor pits over this country that know absolutely nothing about the salvation of God and the call of God. You need to remember that. The Lord called Jonah. But Jonah said, I think I'll just flee from God. I don't believe I want to do what God wants me to do. God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach the Ninevites over there, a bunch of Gentiles. And Jonah said uh, in, in his heart, no doubt, he said, I hate those Gentiles. I despise them. They have caused us a lot of trouble. They have caused my people much trouble. I'll just let them die and go to hell. I think I'll catch me a ship and go to Tarshish. And so he, he decided to try to flee from the presence of the Lord. There are three times in, in this book of Jonah here, you find he tried to flee from the presence of the Lord. Verse 2, but Jonah rose up to flee. He should have read Psalms 139, verses 7 through 12. David said there, If I should sin in the heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed down in hell, thou art there. If I go to the utmost part of the sea, then you're there. David said, I can't get away from God. Now I want to tell you something today, and you ought to know this already. If you're a child of God, indwelled by the Spirit of God, placed in the body of Christ, you cannot get away from God. You might say, well, I'm going to change churches. I'll change towns. I'll change states. I'll try to get away from God. You can't do it. You may go to California, but God will be there. You may go to New York, but God will be there. If you're a child of God, you can't run from God and hide from God. You can't do it. Jonah found a ship going to Tarshish. And no doubt he said, how providential this might be because he has a, a ship going to Tarshish and the providence of God's made a way for me to go to Tarshish instead of Nineveh. I think I'll take this journey. And the Bible said he paid the fare and he went down. He paid the fare and he went down. At any time, a child of God decides that he's going to pay the fare and try to get out here and do what he wants to do He's going down. Now Jonah paid the fare and he went down. Are you paying the fare for pleasure or for the things and affairs of this life? If so, you're going down. Now Jonah went down to Joppa. Then he went down into the ship. Then he went down into the sleeping room. Then he went down into the fish. And he went down to the bottom of the sea. And then he went down on his face before God. Down, down, down went this man. That's what happens to people that break fellowship with God and decide they're going to do what they want to do. They'll start down, down, down until they hit bottom. When Jonah hit bottom, there's no way to turn but to look up. He had to do that. He couldn't go down any further. He hit rock bottom, the Bible tells us. And so Jonah went down. He went to sleep, you know. Jonah went to sleep. He was on the ship after he aborted the ship to go to Tarsus. He went to sleep. And so is every backslider. In a sense, he's asleep when he ought to be wide awake for God. In verse 6 of chapter 1, So the shipmaster came to him and said, What meanest thou, O sleeper? We have too many church members today asleep on the job. If there's ever been a time when to be wide awake, it's now. If there's ever been a time when we need to try to reach people for God, it's now. This land is filled with millions and billions of people that know not God. Samson went to sleep and lost his power with God and man. He lost his hair. His power was in his hair. He went to sleep in the devil's barbershop and got a haircut and his power was gone. He had no power. Simon Peter went to sleep in the garden when he ought to have been praying, but he went to sleep on the job, the Bible tells us. And while men sleep, the devil sows his tares. Every church ought to be wide awake. If we are not wide awake and on the alert, the devil is slipping here and sow some tares among us. So we've got to keep our eyes open. We must recognize these tares and what they are and where they are and where they came from. Many of the church today has gone to sleep on the job. The preacher's gotten up and tickled their ears and scratched their backs and preached a little social gospel and put them to sleep. 
and the devil slips in. He sows tears all over the church. He'll place people in that church that will eventually cause great trouble. That's why the pastor needs to keep his eyes and ears open, lest the devil sow tares among his flock to cause trouble. The pastor needs to be wide awake, and so should other church members. But you have many churches today that's gone to sleep on the job, and they try to start at 11 o'clock sharp and end up at 12 o'clock dull, and then the dead rise and go home. But the devil sows the tares among the wheat during the service. And if he can plant enough tares in the church, it, uh, sooner or later, they'll rise up and stick their heads up, and you'll know they're tares. They look like the wheat. They're sitting among the wheat, but they'll find out, you'll find out later, they are tares. Many, many churches thought they had some good church members that loved God, and the preacher thought he had people that really work with him and sacrifice for him and stand by him. Later on, they stuck up their head. And he saw there were tares among the wheat. And they began to cause trouble. Now we need to stay wide awake lest that happen. Now a few men know that, beloved, but we need to realize that as we sojourn. Now he couldn't hide his backsliding. He brought trouble on the boat. And a backslide, I don't care who he is or where he goes, he's going to cause uh, problems. He'll cause it on his job. He'll cause it in his home. He'll cause it in the community. And it caused problems in the church. Whenever he's backslid on God, a person can get mighty, mighty mean and mighty cruel and mighty aggravating uh, whenever he's backslid on God. How to beware of that. Old Daniel called, I mean, old Jonah caused trouble here on the boat. And they took up Jonah and cast him into the sea. But they didn't give him any refund on his ticket. They bought a ticket to go to Tarshish. And so they throw him overboard without any refund. And that's exactly what will happen to you if you don't realize that salvation is of God and depend on God and trust God to see you through day by day. You'll wind up in the sea without any refund on your ticket. You need to move on for God and keep on keeping on for God. So Jonah's running from God. We come to second thought, and that is Jonah's running to God. If you find in chapter 2, he found himself here. In, in a good man's hell. And when I say a good man's hell, I'm not talking about the hell down the heart of the earth. I'm talking about what a backslider gets into when he breaks fellowship with God. He's going to wind up in a good man's hell. Now you're talking about problems. You're talking about trouble. You're talking about heartache. You're talking about confusion. You're talking about everything going wrong. That happens to people when they get out of fellowship with God. They end up in a good man's hell. And they wind up with more problems than they can handle them. And they scare out more snakes than they can kill. And they don't know what to do about it. Beloved, there's not but one thing to do in that. Realize salvation is of the Lord. And get back into fellowship with God. Now he prayed unto the Lord. Now this prayer is quoted nine times in the Psalms. He prayed unto the Lord. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God out of the fishes. But I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord. You know, it's sad that sometimes church members get out of fellowship with God, become disobedient. God has to really deal with them many times through uh, sickness and many times uh, uh, through difficulty, uh, many times uh, uh, through their effort to do good or have a good job or something like that. God has to deal with them and they wind up with real problems. Now you'll do that when you get out of fellowship with God. That's what happened here. He cried because of his affliction. And there's a lot of church members today had they obeyed God and walked with God, they would not be in a terrible predicament. I was talking to a man the other day, and he, I led him to God, he and his wife, many, many years ago, and he backslid on God. And uh, I went to see him. He was, and he was in a, a nursing home. He'd had a stroke, and he began to cry. And he said, "Preacher, I, I know, I, I know, I've done wrong, and uh, I prayed all night." And that was a poor man crying and praying. Had that man, I believe with all my heart, he may be listening today. I hope he is. I believe with all my heart, had that man stuck in here in the North Side Baptist Church. And walk with God like he and his wife did years ago. He wouldn't be in the shape he's in today. He said, my son won't even pay me a visit, he said. My son won't come to see me. He said, would you see my son and have him to come to see me? Well, he's in sad shape. He's, 
He backslid on God and now he's in the fish's belly and he know what to do about it. Now you'll get into trouble when you backslide on God. And then this man, Jonah, began to think about the old church. He thought about the temple. He said, I look again toward thy holy temple. Many times have I had church members say to me in the hospital, Preacher, preacher, if I get out of this place, you'll see me in church. I'll be there. Sometimes they'll come, and when they get well and get out of the hospital, then you don't see them. You know what's going to happen to them? A worse thing is going to happen to them next time. I mean a worse thing. And when you promise God something, promise the preacher something, you ought to do it. Don't the worst thing is going to happen to you, certain as the world. And he promised to pay his vows. Verse 9. I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. And then he remembered that salvation is of God. When this man promised to pay his vows, I don't know what they were. I think one of them was. That he told God when God called him to preach, he'd preach anywhere that God wanted him to preach. He'd go anywhere God wanted him to go. He'd do anything God wanted him to do. And when God said, I want you to go to Nineveh, he said, excuse me, Lord. I believe I'd rather go to Tarshish. God said Nineveh. He said Tarshish. God said Nineveh. He said Tarshish. But where did he go? Man, did he go to Nineveh? He went to Nineveh in a, a day's journey, three days journey in one. He went to Nineveh. When he, when he finished with a postgraduate course in Fish College, he was glad to go to Nineveh. Now, he might have smelled like a sardine can, brother, but that man was moving on. If somebody had come by an old A-model Ford and honked the horn and said, uh, Hey, buddy, would you like to ride? He says, Thank you. I'm in a hurry. Man, he kept digging on because he wanted to get to Nineveh. He would get as far away from that whale or that fish as he could. He had had enough of that business. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if you've been born again, you backslide on God. When God lets you out of that fish's belly, exactly where you're going, if you continue on like you're going now, you're going to wind up in trouble. And when you get out, you'll be glad to come back and serve God. A lot of people are heading straight toward the fish's belly as they can go right now. You can't be a saved man, born again, wash the blood of Christ, and go out here and live your own life, ignore God, and pass up God's church like a, a, tramp, a freight train passing up a tramp. You can't do that. Sooner or later, God will call your number, and when he does, it'll be bad. So when he remembered salvation is the Lord, the fish disgorged him, and he hit the ground running. I mean, that man hit the ground moving. He was moving on. In chapter 3, he runs with God. God gave him a second change. A second change. God employed him the second time. And God said, Jonah, yes, sir, Lord. I want you to go to Nineveh. Yes, sir, Lord. And before God said it real good, he was on his way. He was on the move. He didn't fuss with God about Nineveh. No, no. No, no. He, he, he realized the mistake he had made, and he wasn't going to argue about it. And God gave him a second chance. Now, God will give you a second chance if you're broken fellowship with God. God gave Peter a second chance. God gave David a second chance. God gave Jonah here a second chance. And God will give you a second chance. If you're out there and you're out of fellowship with God, and if you, want, if you mean business with the Lord, he'll give you a second chance. And in verse 2, he preached the biddings that God bid him. That's in chapter 3 and verse 2. He said, God, I'm going to preach exactly what you tell me. Now, the man of God is to preach what God said in this book. God tells us in the book what to preach. And he made a three days journey in one. And the Bible says in verse 5, the people of Nineveh believed God. When this Baptist preacher came running in there, brother, and they could tell by the tone in his voice and look in his eye that this man meant business. He ran on one street corner and yelled out, said, repent. You better repent. If you don't in 40 days, God's going to destroy this place. He took off to another street corner and he yelled out, Oh, repent, repent, repent. If you don't, God's going to destroy this place. He went to another street corner and he cried the same thing and another and another. And people began to come out to hear him. They said, I can tell by the tone of his voice. I can tell by the look in his eye. That man means business. That man is sent from God. And the Bible said they believed God. And the old king came down off the throne. He said, we go on a fast. I want everybody from the king's house, the dog house, to go on a fast. The Bible tells us that the man and the beast and the fowls and all went on a fast. Every one of them. The dog didn't get a biscuit. 
And the cat couldn't eat a rat. Everything went on a fast. The old king went on a fast. Everybody in Nineveh went on a fast. They began to cry to God. And Jonah kept crying out, You better repent. In 40 days, God's going to destroy this place. You better get right. God's going to destroy this place. They didn't eat a bite. They didn't drink a drop of water. They were all on the fast from the white house to the poor house. And the Bible says in verse 7, Neither man nor beast flock that taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. Not a drop of water. Not a crumb of bread. Don't you feed the cattle. Don't you feed the chickens. Don't you feed the dogs. Don't feed the cats. Don't feed anybody. I want everybody, man, beast, and fowl, to go on a fast. This preacher means business. We better get right with God. And so they got on their knees. And the Bible said they began to cry to God. And they turned from their sins and got right with God. Verse 8, they cried mightily unto God. And then he let every man turn from his evil way. And when they did that, then they got some relief. But this man remembered salvation is of the Lord, and he wanted them to know that. But we find in chapter 4 that this old preacher run ahead of God. Now, a lot of times you do that. You run ahead of God if you're not careful. You need to stay with God, walk with God, and not lag behind and not run ahead. You may say, preacher, how did you run ahead of God? Well, the Bible says in chapter 4, he prayed to die in verse 3. Therefore now, Lord, take, I beseech thee, my life for me, for it's better for me to die than to live. God said, Son, I gave you life. Now get ready to take it. I'll take it. Just mind your business. You don't need to pray to die. Don't, don't run ahead of me. You'll die in due time. Now don't run ahead of God. God will help you if you walk with him and stay with him. But you trot off out on the head of God, then you might get into trouble. You'll find out you've missed it out there somewhere. But God taught him a great lesson. God used the fish. God used the east wind. God used the gourd vine. And God used a little worm to straighten this Baptist preacher out. You know why I know he's a Baptist? Sitting up every side of the mountain, looking over Nineveh, pouting. That's how I know he's a Baptist, pouting. Sitting up there pouting. He didn't like the way things is going. He'd rather God go ahead and destroy them uh, Ninevites down. They didn't like them anyway. They a bunch of Gentiles caused them trouble, and he pouted because God didn't destroy them. God said, you ought to be ashamed yourself. There's little young ones. There's 6,000 on the right hand and the left. There's cattle and animals, and you want them killed, and, and you're more concerned about this worm cutting down this gourd vine than you are about saving those people down there. See, God told that little worm, God said that little worm, he said, that, uh, I just grew up a vine over that old pouting Baptist up there, and uh, uh, he's, he thinks he's got it made now. And I want you to go up there and take your saw and whack that thing down right on top of his head. That little worm said, yes, the Lord. And that little worm moved up there and peeped up at that backslidden Baptist preacher and uh, saw that he was asleep and pouting up there. His lips poked out uh, long enough, to, out far enough to go to meal on, as my grandmother used to say. And there, the little old worm took his saw and he started sawing and he sawed and down went that gourd vine right on the head of that Baptist preacher. See, he obeyed God. That little worm obeyed God more so than Jonah did in the beginning. See, a lot of things obey God more than man. Did you know that? And then Jonah realized what had happened, and uh, he began to wake up, and God began to bless and, and save those Ninevites. So they repented and turned to God. I want you to remember that salvation is of the Lord. You remember that? If you believe salvation is the Lord, say amen. amen. All right, let's stand our feet. You've listened well. Our Father, I pray that you'll take the message and help us all realize that salvation is of the Lord. That you save men. We don't save ourselves. You save men. God help somebody to realize that today. And have you in this invitation? I do pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Now, while Debbie plays on the instrument, are you listening? If you're here in this building unsaved, if you're here and you like Jonah, you're backslid on God and headed toward the fish's belly. If you're here and you want to join this church, or if you're here for any reason you want to come forward, now you have ample time to move while she plays, I want you to do it. We give you time to do that. Come on, we'll help you. Tony, be right here to help you. I'll help you. Would you come while we wait?
You want to get saved? Come back to God. Join the church. Rededicate your life. Whatever God is speaking to you about that you need to do. Salvation is of the Lord. Jonah got in bad shape. Jonah got himself in bad shape. He didn't do what God told him to do. Don't you end up that way. You'd get yourself in a bad predicament by not doing what God told you to do. Jonah thought, well, there's no difference in Tarsus and Nineveh. God said, yes, there are. If I wanted you to go to Tarsus, I told you to go to Tarsus. I want you to go to Nineveh. So be sure you do what God wants you to do. How about it? Thank you for coming. I want you.